So just felt like we had a hard time, like, generating any juice. Like, I thought we played much harder defensively at GW than we did here tonight, and probably because we traveled twice. We've had trouble all year long coming back, and uh, you know, we only had eight guys, so – that's part of it, but part of it's just straight mental toughness, really. I mean, and, you know, it's a little frustrating, but by the same token, you know, we're playing like a – our size is almost like a high school team. I mean, so, like, we can't throw the ball inside at all, which at times is – you know, they're switching every ball screen. We can't throw it inside on them. So, it's like – you almost feel helpless sometimes, like, and then defensively we can't we can't do anything at the rim because we're so small half the time. O'Neal's not quite ready yet to play huge minutes, so you know it's like there's not much we could do about it. He's gotten better at some things, you know. He he doesn't know much, you know. That's probably the biggest thing. But in fairness. You know, it's going to take them some time. When you when you when you don't grow up in basketball, like most of our kids grow up from five years old. You know, they got it in their hands. He really only played four years, so he's playing catch up. But he's, he's a great kid. He just got to learn. You know, like some of those some of those should have been blocks, and he never got off his man. But that's just it's a whole new ball game for him. Good question. The brevity. Um, it wasn't the best senior class I ever had. I mean, Noah's a great kid, but we had more managers than players. Kind of tells you how how it goes, right? And then you look over on the sidelines, you got 45 guys over there in warm-up suits or whatever. I mean, whatever whatever could go wrong this year has gone wrong. So, again, I'm going to say this. This is going to sound bad, but it doesn't matter if you win 6 or 12 or 9 or even 14. Like, if you're not championship quality, what the hell is the difference? Right? Like, So, at least we're getting it all out of our system. You know, we'll get the injuries out of our system. You know, I just feel like I've never had a smaller team than that. That's... That's hard. It's not really how I like to play. Like so that's that's probably the most but it's a good question. It's that kind of sums it up, right? So I've never really been involved in this, so I've talked to some coaches that have been through it, and they say, hey, you just got to celebrate the small wins. So, like, I, it's hard for me to celebrate the small wins when you don't win. But we know, at least we know exactly everything about our guys right now. Who can make plays when it matters, who, you know, lack a little bit of toughness, who, who can get better. You know, we know pretty much everything about every guy now. So from that perspective, it's really good, right? Because we know exactly what we're dealing with and what we have to do to get get better. It's clear, like, we're – like, I'm thinking to myself, we're hanging around with most of the teams in the league, and, like, it's – I mean, it's hard. Like, it's it's hard to even fathom the situation that we're in. Like, it's – like you still you still think you can win, and like this is the fr this is the first time we shot the ball at a reasonable rate, and tonight we didn't guard. You know, like we haven't shot over forty percent about I don't know maybe five times all year. So it's a hard deal. Sort of an Achilles heel to you guys in 
and is that an area where you might have to improve, even though you have sort of smaller guards? Going back into those. So I, I I'm gonna compliment you again because. Uh, me and Dave have talked about you on numerous occasions about the questions that you ask and uh, the the not the knowledge that you have about the game and uh, so you go back and you 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 do your Ken Palm research on my teams and you check that three point defense okay I want you to do that that's your homework assignment and I've always had good three point defensive teams. So it certainly isn't schematic. It's all personnel, right? So your point is when you have small guards and you're closing out to, like you're sitting in on the ball screen and then you got to close out to the, to the shooter, if you're small, like those guys know they're getting it up, right? Like, so they're shooting with supreme confidence. Now we butchered, we butchered a bunch of coverages too, don't get me wrong. Like, and that's probably an, an area that we, we're really bad at is our, our general IQ, you know, just our retention of details that are, that are continuous. But part of it is straight personnel. Like if you, if you're small on those, in those guard spots and you're closing out to those shooters, then they're going to shoot a little better rate. But part of it is brains. Like, so we're played zone, which that tells you kind of where we're at because I really don't like to play zone, but I had to, right? And we go end of the clock, and they only got two guys really shooting it, and we don't really shade them. You know, we, we let Nickelberry shoot it. We, we contest it, but we half-ass contest it, really, right? And that's what happens when you half-ass contest something, right? Um, so a lot, of, a lot of bad defense is personnel-based, and we got a lot to work work on there, but part of it is we're small too, so we can't fix any mistakes. But we're inconsistent. That's the that's the other part. I would just uh, ask a follow up question. In part, it has to do with when it comes to the health defense that with the team are sort of being raw and sort of not knowing where to go. That the guard can sometimes play when he's on the floor. They don't know that, so they sort of head a little too far to help him. No, I don't think it's that so much. I, I think it's more – I think it's just consistency of effort and when you're tired and your toughness. Like, older teams don't make those mistakes. Like, and we, we spent a lot of time on that end, so that's probably the most disappointing thing to me. That's why I played Davis. Like, he wasn't great tonight defensively either, but he's better than those guys. Just from a straight – like, like what I told the guys in the locker room was the reason Davis is a pretty good player is he knows what he is. He knows he's a middle linebacker. He's not a wide receiver. And so when you, when you don't know what you are, it's hard to be a good player. It'd be like when I played baseball, for instance, if I tried to hit home runs, I was going to hit about 120. But if I walked and hit the ball to right field and just put it in play, I was going to hit pretty good. So I knew what I was. And I think – that's probably the hardest thing with my, the modern day athlete now is they all want to be something that they're not. And when you when you try to do something that you that you're not good at, you generally don't play very well. But why is that? That's that's the question. Like why are guys why why do guys have such a hard time trying to figure it out? You know, I don't. I don't think the number means so much. He's got to be more efficient. You know, he's had. But again, he's a freshman playing on a bad team with, you know, not a lot of options at times, and he has to do more than he's than he really should. So sometimes he plays very uh, inefficiently. But part of it is part of it is circumstances, and part of it is frustration, and part of it is just bad decision making. But overall, for a freshman, he's done a pretty good job, you know. But he's got some areas that he has to improve upon to really become a good player. 
No, he's just – he's a typical freshman, and we're asking him to do too much, really. And he's doing too much, really. Now, tonight he was pretty good. But he was he, – he, he should be a top-of-the-line defender, too, and he isn't right now. But part of it is our situation. You know, it's, it's kind of like when you watch LeBron now. LeBron stinks defensively because he, he can't play both ends at a high level all the time. Yeah, I think they're both different. You know, Jackie, we're just teaching Jackie. And like I told Jackie after the game, I said, look, man, it's all your issues come down to me. Like I have to teach you every little thing. And, you know, if you allow me to be hard on you, I can I can fix all your issues. But if you want me to poo-poo around, then I can't fix your issues. So you tell me how you want it. So, you know, he makes some home runs. He hits some home runs and then he'll strike out. Like like this game alone, you could you probably saw five strikeouts and four home runs. Right? And you can't really win striking out. You know, you you gotta get a walk or a single, but he hits home runs or strikes out. Right? It's pretty obvious. So that's all habits and He's allowed me to be relatively hard on him, but 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 the one thing he can do, if you score 30 points in a game as a freshman or 27 or 27, then there's hope for you. But he has to get better passing the ball. Defensively, he makes a lot of mistakes. But it's not that he's not trying. I like, I like Jackie attitudinally. Now, he gets frustrated in the game, but overall his attitude's good. I mean, it's it's hard when you lose a thousand games in a row. Like I'm sure there's some frustration. You know, I'm proud of the fact that they got down 19 again and came back, had a chance to win the game. But you can't get down 19. So, I mean, we got we got some guys to build around. We got some other guys that you know, you know, they have to check their competitive spirit. Like I told him in the locker room, I said. There's lots of times I get frustrated, but I'm a coach to the bitter end. I don't care. Like, you didn't see me sit down. You don't think sometimes I, I don't want to sit down? But, like, that's a bad message. It's been a humbling year for me. But by the same token, I've had a lot of good years. So I'm not going to let one bad year rain on my parade, really. I'm just going to try to fix the problem. And we look, we have to get better. Like we we have to win March and April. Late March and April. We have to win in March and April. Simple as that. Like we have to we have to we have to fix our issues. And we have personnel issues that we have to fix. I don't know if it's made me a better coach. It's probably aged me. Um, I will tell you this, um, and I'm I'm a pretty humble person. Like I've worked my behind off for these five years. Like I've I've worked really hard to to make this a good program. Um, and the two years out of the gym, like it affects you. Again, it, this building's worth it, but I wish I was coming in after the building was built. You know. One year would have been all right, but two years was – it affected our program. And I, I think, you know, you can even look at the women's team and argue the same thing because he's never really lost, right? So, again, we're not going to make any excuses, but, you know, it affected us. And um, the long-term gain of it is great. Like, this building's un unbelievable. But the short term was really hard on me, and it – and. To answer your question, it's tested my resolve every single day. Like, um, 
but I kind of I kind of learned a lot when I you know when I went through my first uh, snafu that I just try to look myself in the mirror and I I ask the question do I still work hard do I still have it do I still have that burning desire to be successful um, am I willing to get hit with 19 pitches uh, do do I still relate to the players you know, you have to ask all those questions. Am I getting the right guys for me? Um, but there's been days I've sat there and thought, oh, my God, is it worth it? You know, and one of them was when I saw uh, John Carroll, the former coach at Duquesne at Rhode Island. You know, and he's, he's battled some illness, and it makes you wonder whether it's worth it. You know what I mean? Because this job is – this job's like no other job. It's hard to explain. It's, it's, you know, there's no, it's all about the result. And it doesn't matter if you're working hard or you have to have come up with the result. Nobody cares. So, yeah, it's been, the sickness part really knocked me on my, like, I, I struggled. And I think it affected our team. You know, I, I wasn't right for six weeks. Like, I, I could barely get through practice. And I feel like I'm a relatively tough guy. Like, I – so I, that – it's been a rough – I think part of it, you know, I went I went home every day for five weeks to see my dad, every day, boom, 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 coming back. You know, that, that affected me as well. Like, so all I'm trying to do is just analyze where I'm at as a coach and as a person and not let – Fail, short-term failure affect my my attitude or my bitterness level. So I think that's the one thing in life you have to really be careful of is short-term emotions can really throw you off. I feel like I've done a better job in the last month of that than I did earlier. Um, I've just tried to coach them every day and try to give them my best effort every single day, knowing that we're not very good which that's, that's even harder, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, pull any punches. We're, with what's happened to us, our circumstances, we're not very good. We have to play almost perfect to win. So, yeah, it's been – I think it makes you better in the long run. It, you know, it probably shakes up your mojo in the short run. You know, like I was – I was talking with Steve before the game, and I said, man, I'm not as nervous as I usually am. And partly because, like, I'm used to playing for first place this time of year. You know what I mean? Like, so that's that's probably been the biggest adjustment for me. Like, I just don't want to lose the edge. You know what I mean? Like, you can lose your edge if you, if you don't really check yourself. I keep just trying to judge. Just everybody knows who works and who doesn't work, right? Everybody in this building knows who works and who doesn't work. And I don't care. Like, I care about success, but I never want to be one of those people that don't work. I, I grew up with a mother that, man, she worked. And so, like, I, I can't live with myself if I don't put everything into it. And when I can't put everything into it, then I have to quit. I won't do that. But I still feel like I have, I have great desire. What are What's that? What are Everything. We're only good at a couple things. Come on, Tristan, I'll ask you, what are we good at? And the question is, will they continue to do that when you when you become a good team? So 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 here's here's to answer your question. We're good when we double the post. We're really good at that. Like especially with certain teams in there, like 
we don't really get hurt in there because we're good at double and we steal the ball out of the double team. We're good at that, right? We're good at not turning the ball over, which could be a little misleading because we don't pass the freaking ball, right? So what are we bad at? We're a very poor shooting team, right? We're a very poor assist to turnover team. Um, we're erratic defensively, not good. So really we're not good at anything other than those two things I just said in, in reality. Um, but the funny thing about basketball is a guy here, a guy there could change the whole dynamic of the whole situation. So that's the, that's a tricky thing about this and losing one guy when you have a good team can change the whole dynamic. So my first year as an assistant at Eastern Michigan, my second year, we had Grant Long went to the NCAA tournament. Had all four starters back other than Grant Long, who played 13 years in the, in the NBA, or maybe more than that, 15 years. And we were just okay. One guy made that much difference. And I, I think that's like if you took a high-level pro and put it on this team, or you took Osuni off of St. Bonaventure, you'd see exactly what I'm talking about. So the good thing about basketball over football is that it only takes one or two. So, oh, the other part that we're really bad at is we don't shoot the ball. We're, we're, we're a poor shooting team. So we have to improve our ball handling, our assist to turnover ratio. We have to get bigger inside, which we have some guys sitting there which can kind of fix that issue, but we'll still recruit some. And we, we, we have to move the ball better. And then our toughness level is, is not near good enough, in my opinion. So part of it might be because you, you play a lot of young kids, but part of it is you're just not tough enough. Good question. Appreciate What's that? Um, you know, just for uh, his own protection, I'd rather not talk about that. Like, I like Leon, and, you know, I just think it's better if we just don't talk about it. I know that's not great for the media, but... It's it's in the best interest of the young man, and that's really all I care about. Um, so it's it's it's. I knew somebody was going to ask me, Dave. Just because we're friends doesn't mean you can ask me that. I got to protect my guy. You know that. You, know, you should ask the question. I, I I'm kidding you. So, but I have to protect him. So, good.